Let's talk about solving radical equations. When you're solving radical equations, the first thing you want to do is get the radical all by itself. So move everything away from it. And then you want to get rid of the radical. So you're going to do things like square it or cube, I mean, excuse me, square both sides or cube both sides to get rid of the radical. And then you want to solve the remaining equation. And the remaining equation could be linear or at this point it could also be a quadratic equation. So I've given you an example of what linear versus quadratic might look like. So a linear equation has only one variable and then nothing is squared or cubed. But a quadratic equation, you're going to have a term that's squared and a term that's not squared. For instance, like 3x squared plus 2x. There's no way to break those up and solve without using one of your quadratic methods that we've learned. So you have factoring, quadratic formula, and completing the square. So keep in mind that if, as you're solving radical equations, you end up with a term that's squared and a term that's not squared within your same equation, you're going to have to get everything on one side and use quadratic techniques to solve it the rest of the way. So let's take a look at some examples. So first we start out with some nice, small, simple equations. So we have the square root of x minus 4 equals 0. So like I said in the notes, we want to get the radical by itself. So if we add 4, we get the square root of x all by itself will equal 4. And then we want to get rid of the radical. So to get rid of a square root, you do the inverse operation, which would be to square it. With equations, you always have to do the same thing on both sides to keep things equal. So the square root of x squared would cancel out each other, and you have x equals 4 squared, which is just 16. So that would be it for example 1. Let's try example 2. I have 3 times the square root of x minus 8 equals 12. So to get the radical by itself, we can divide both sides by 3. So I get the square root of x minus 8 equals 4. Then we want to get rid of the square root, so square both sides. And I have x minus 8 equals 16. So when I add 8 to both sides, I get x equals 24. So that's it for that example. And for these examples, you can plug your answer back in and check to see if it makes good sense. So this is another place in our curriculum where we can check ourselves, which is always a good, good to do on a test when you have spare time. So the cube root of c minus 1 equals 2. So to get rid of the cube root, see this one's already by itself, so we just need to go ahead and get rid of it, would be to cube both sides. So take both sides to the third power. And then the cube root and the cube are opposite, so they cancel out, and we have c minus 1 is equal to 8. And then we add 1 on both sides to finish solving, and we get c equals 9. So that's it for example 3. Example 4 has a fifth root, so I'm trying to show you some different ones, so you'll see how to get rid of them no matter what power or root you're given. So first we need to get it by itself. We can subtract this 3 over here, and we would end up with the fifth root of 5x plus 7 is equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2. To get rid of the fifth root, we take both sides to the fifth power. So we'd end up with 5x plus 7, because the fifth root and the fifth power cancel each other out, and 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32. When we subtract 7, so we're solving our linear equation that we have left over, I get 5x equals 25. So when I divide by 5, x will just equal 5. And again, you can plug that back into your original problem and make sure that it makes a true statement. Let's look at one more on this board. And then we have a few more on the last board. For one like this, you have a radical on both sides. So when you square both sides, they're both going to cancel out, and you'll just be left with your linear equation in this case. So we'll have x plus 5 left over because the square root goes away, and 2x minus 4 left over because the square root went away. Now that happens only when there's nothing else over there 
with that radical. It's only one radical expression on each side. But from here, we can solve what's left over. Notice this is a linear equation, so you don't need any fancy methods because there's nothing squared in there. So I would subtract x, bring down 5, so you get 5 equals x minus 4, add 4, so we get x equals 9. And see, we could plug that back in, so let's do one to check it. If I plug back in 9 for my x value, I get 9 plus 5 would be the square root of 14, and I check to see, would that be equal to 2 times 9, which is 18 minus 4. So you're just checking to make sure it makes a true statement, and that way you know you have the right answer. Now let's look at two more. So for example one here, like I was saying on that last example, if you don't have anything with the radicals, they would cancel. But for this example, this one's not by itself. So when we square both sides, it's going to take a little more work than that last one did. But that is the first step, because I can't do anything to get a radical more by itself than what was already there. Like if I added one to both sides, then the one's just on that other side, and you still don't have the radicals by themselves. So go ahead and square both sides in this case. And on this side, m plus 1 will come out evenly. But over here, when we square a binomial, because now this is a binomial expression, we get to use everyone's favorite method foiling or the box, whichever method you prefer to multiply your binomials. And so I'm going to bring down m plus 1, and I'm going to use the foil method. If you like the box, you could come over here with your notes and write the box down. So we have m, the square root of m plus 6 times itself. So when you have a square root times another square root, they cancel each other out, and you have, like, that's because they're identical, I should say. The square root of m plus 6 times itself means that you're squaring it. And so m plus 6 comes out evenly. The outside term is going to be negative 1 times the square root of m plus 6. So it's negative square root m plus 6. Inside will give us the same thing. And last, we get negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we can clean this up. Now notice with algebraic equations, if you have the same exact thing on both sides, then you can cancel them. So right here is a good example of that. I have m and then m on the other side. They're identical. So it's okay in math to cancel them. You don't have to write minus m on both sides. That's technically what you're doing when you mark them out. So go ahead and mark them out. We bring down 1 equals 6, and we can put these two together because they're like terms. So it's like minus 1 and minus 1 is minus 2 square root of m plus 6, and we still have a 1 back here in the back. That's not underneath the radical. So I need to put 6 plus 1 together, so I end up with 1 equals 7 minus 2 square root of m plus 6. Now I'm going to come over here where I have more room. So Right here, I'm going to subtract the 7. So if I subtract the 7, I get negative 6 equals negative 2 square root of m plus 6. I want to get the radical by itself, so we're still trying to do that. Divide by negative 2, we get 3 equals the square root of m plus 6. So now we're finally at the point where we can get rid of the radical. So it's the square root, we need to square both sides, so we get 9 equals m plus 6. And last but not least, we solve for m. So we get 3 is equal to m. And again, you can plug it back in and make sure that it makes sense, and that's a good thing to do just to be safe. But let's look at this last example in interest of time. We have here the square root of 12 minus x equals x. So let's get rid of the radical. It's already by itself. So we get 12 minus x equals x squared. So this is the one where you see how you have x squared and x in the same problem? This is quadratic. So when you notice that that's happening, put everything on one side. And I recommend you keep x squared positive. 
So to keep x squared positive, I need to put x on this side. So I'm going to add it, and then I'm going to subtract the 12. So I moved everything over here. So it changed the sign of x and changed the sign of 12, because I moved it across the equal sign. And now we think of methods that would work for quadratics, like factoring, quadratic formula, or completing the square. Factoring is the fastest method, so you always want to check and see if it'll factor first. So if I try to factor this, I would need numbers that will multiply to be negative 12 and add up to be 1. So it does factor into x plus 4 and x minus 3. So this means I have two solutions that would work, negative 4 and positive 3. Now, let's check this answer. So we have the square root of 12 minus negative 4 equals negative 4. That gives us the square root of 12 minus negative 4, which would turn into 16, is equal to negative 4. Now, is the square root of 16 equal to negative 4? Nope. It's equal to positive 4. And sometimes we've talked about having a plus and minus there. The plus and minus only come into play when you put the square root in the problem. But if the problem's already given to you, like they've already given us this square root as part of our problem, we would say that that doesn't make sense. So this is an extraneous solution. Let me write that down. We call it extraneous. We solved and we found this number but it doesn't make sense with our original problem. So as I've been telling you throughout this video, you check your work. It's always good to check your work, but just to make sure these answers make sense, you definitely want to check your work. So this one did not make sense. Let's check the three. If I have the square root of 12 minus three, so I'm just plugging it back in the original problem, let's see if that's equal to three. So 12 minus three would be the square root of nine, and that is equal to three. So 3 would be our only solution here. Negative 4 would not make good sense.